My name is uh, Dr. Mohamed Fatoum, and I'm the medical director at IVF London. And today I'm going to speak to you uh, about the protocols that we use for ovarian stimulation in IVF patients. Mainly we'll speak about the long and the short uh, protocols. So in IVF, there are uh, two main and common protocols that we use for the ovarian stimulation. Uh, firstly, we have the short protocol, also known as the uh, antagonist protocol, and also we have the long protocol, also known as the agonist protocol or the down regulation uh, protocol. These protocols differ in terms of the timing, uh, the medications used, and the duration of medication administration, as well as the mechanism of action of these uh, different medications that we use in suppressing the natural hormonal activity and preventing the premature uh, ovulation. We'll start firstly with a short protocol. So short protocol typically begins on the second day of the menstrual cycle with uh, gonadotropins to stimulate the ovaries. Then we use the GnRH or the uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone antagonists. We introduce them later in the stimulation phase in order to uh, prevent premature ovulation. Short protocol has uh, been associated with a lower risk of hyperstimulation Therefore, often it is used in high responders or uh, with patients that ha have high risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. Pregnancy rates in short protocol are comparable to the long protocol. The other protocol is the long protocol or the agonist protocol, or as said, it is the down regulation protocol. Typically, it begins in the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle preceding the IVF cycle. Often it requires one month of uh, more preparations before ovarian stimulation. Gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists or the GnRH agonists are given to suppress the hormonal activity and prevent premature ovulation. Once down regulation is achieved, then gonadotropins are administered to stimulate the follicle uh, development. Long protocol involves a longer period of uh, suppression through the use of the GnRH agonists. Pregnancy outcomes in the long protocol are comparable to the short protocol, and often uh, the long protocol is used for low responders or normal responders. Both protocols are in widespread use in IVF patients, and when deciding on which protocol to use, your clinician will take into account the uh, patient's specific conditions like the age, the patient's history, and uh, markers and indicators of ovarian reserve. As to the question, uh, if there was any correlation between a premature menopause for women having uh, IVF or not, then we can reassure uh, you that there is no scientific evidence to suggest that IVF causes premature menopause. The process of IVF itself doesn't deplete the uh, ovarian reserve and the eggs are not used up more quickly in IVF uh, patients compared to uh, patients not having the IVF treatment. The same group of follicles uh, responding to the stimulation in IVF cycle is available and used up in natural cycle, except uh, for the fact that uh, most of them do not continue to grow and it is only one dominant follicle that takes the lead and ovulates. Henceforth, IVF patients are not more prone to have a premature menopause. Thank you.